Hi, everyone. <laughs> well, hi to everyone who may be watching in the future. Still a little flustered from the Mega Man X speedrun earlier, but I kinda also wanted to do some game dev tonight. So let's see what we're gonna do. I think tonight I want to make another background and I want to make it so that two of the same backgrounds can't happen at the same time. Alright. Let's copy all of you. Make a new scene. Wait, I didn't want that. I want all this stuff under you. There we go. Uh, hi, whoever just started watching. How's your evening going? What just happened? Where'd everything go? Oh, hi, Exodrifter! Uh, how was board games? What did you all end up playing? Oh, there it's back. Good, I got myself into a strange situation I had never been in before. Ooh! Uh, feel free to share, or um, tell me about it later. If if it's like something you don't want to share in chat or whatever. For Caverna, we also played Roll for the Galaxy. I have not played either of those. Ooh, Caverner looks really fun. <laughs> Roll for the Galaxy looks kind of complicated. Have you played designer or European board games before? Um, I've played like... I've played some board games that are like sort of specialty, like, uh, what's that? Um, Ar <sighs> Arkham Horror and Small World and Castle Ravenloft. Is that the kind of stuff you were talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've played a bunch of those. I can't remember the names of a bunch of them. The only ones that I have are Castle Ravenloft, Small World, um, uh, shoot, they're, they're in my room next door, but I haven't looked at them in a while. I've got like half a dozen, is all. My friends have way more. Um, one of my favorites that I keep meaning to pick up, but I never do, is, I think it's called Sabotage? It's like your Dwarven Miners or something tend to play a lot of the more hardcore end of the spectrum. Ooh, nice. <laughs> I'm usually good at the ones that don't require a lot of math, if you might imagine. <laughs> but the ones that mean that you need to like bluff and stuff on, I'm an ace. Uh, okay. What do I want you to be? Oh, particles. Um. Small world has a weight rating 
a weight rating? Board Games Geek, I'm assuming? Oh, complexity rating. I gotcha. Um, that's a neat metric. Uh, hi, Casper Dragon Wolf. How's your evening going? I'll have to check that out. You know what game I really used to like when I was when I was a uh, a little Nova? Um, it was called Hero Quest. It was basically Dungeons and Dragons Light, but I just oh I fell in love with that game. And I kept thinking, like, I want to pick a copy of it up, but they go for, like, hundreds if not thousands of dollars for the full set. So then I was thinking, well, I've got a 3D printer. Maybe I could just, you know, print all the figurines and stuff. But my 3D printer is nowhere near um, high enough quality to make those kinds of things. But it's definitely a maybe. The other thing I was thinking of is it might be fun to make a video game based on it. Um, it'd be pretty simple too. But that's for a little ways down the road, I think. Once I know more about 3D stuff. Although I suppose I could do it in 2D. Uh, it's going... Plus, you forgot to change your stream settings. Thanks for the reminder. Or I could play more Mega Man X. But... <laughs> that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, Alright. No, I just typed Mega Man X again. Um... <laughs> More claw machine Edo game engine engine action Edo engine boop and the you are Godot and uh, software and game development there that should update it nice. You're subconsciously wanting to play more Mega Man X? No. No, actually, I'm... I think I'm done with that for a while. Getting that sub one hour run was... Actually kind of stressful. I was super sweaty at the end of it. Um... I think... I mean... Actually, let's see. Uh... Doo -doo. What even rank would I be? Gotta scroll way down here. Alright. I'd be 389. <laughs> Which is better than I thought I was do gonna do. Made it in the 300s for however long that lasts. Um, no, if I was to play a game, I'd probably want to play kind of a softer, easier, slower game now. Maybe Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remastered? Or maybe um, the Lufia II Ancient Dungeon Run. Uh, where you got to go through those hundred levels. That's always fun. Um, but right. Particles. You shall be a different thing. What kind of thing do I want you to be? A point mesh? Um, custom ABB. Um, that's not what I want. Can I make you bigger? Like, bigger dots? 
I suppose if I wanted bigger dots, I probably should do spheres. Should I do a quad? Um, no, maybe not a quad. What kind of shape do I want you to be? I don't want to do planes because those get kind of weird. Maybe I'll do a cube mesh, but I'll make you more like all this style. So you're like that and then I'll have you rotating like rotating crackers in space saltines um, which was the one that I had Yeah, this one. We'll call you... Spinny Squares. Give you a script. Put you in backgrounds. Spinny squares in backgrounds. Um, okay. Now, if we play this scene. We're not even going to see it, that's right. I need to somehow make... Play custom scene? Can I just play you? I cannot just play you. Hmm... You? I do. Play the edited scene. I feel like this should play just this scene, though. But it's like it's getting taken over by the globals. That's right. Those globals are always going to be there. I think I do want that, though. Um, okay. So this we definitely want to work on. spinniness. How am I... Oh, I bet I'm adding that rotation in the particle system itself instead of controlling it with code. That would make a lot more sense. velocity doesn't look like it's 
mission shape. I think that is what I want. Align Y. It looks kind of interesting. Um, I want to shift your perspective to... Let's see. Preview. There we go. That gets me a better idea of what it looks like. Now... These thingies... That actually looks pretty neat. That looks kind of neat too, to be honest. Hmm. Which way do I want it? I think this way. And then... We want... Change these lights. Uh, wait, there we go. Light. What lighting do we want? We've got a green one, got a blue one, got a pink one, and a purpley one. Hmm. Maybe like. A lighter blue one. About there, maybe? <laughs> Spinny squares. They ain't spinning, though. Let's maybe make them spin. Tangential acceleration? No. Radio. Whoa! That's kind of neat, actually. Alright, let's let's take let's tone it down a bit. Okay, that looks really cool. Uh how do I that and this? So it's gonna look kind of like now let's let's actually uh, transform rotation around the Y. Wait, is that right? Yeah. That's some pretty, pretty neat behavior. Let's make you a bit, a bit less though, negative five. Lifetime of five with a pre process of five. Okay. How many of you are there? Maybe that's too many. And 
And then there should be a way to make it so that so that I can't hmm I can't actually so it doesn't draw the ones I can't see what that's called culling but oh right I can do cull the extra distance added to increase its cull box okay needs to be visible on the screen. Oh, so that's already in there. Okay. Never mind then. think is an angle curve feels like someone is teleporting in yeah getting all sorts of teleporty particles so if I go like this to that and if I do I think this needs to be 128, because so that's the new default. If we give you some random, now we got all sorts of spinny squares coming at ya. Maybe not that much random though. Maybe do I want him to be going this way? Or maybe do I want him to go like back and forth? That's a little strange. Maybe let's not do that. Instead, if the effect that I want is for some to be rotating one way and in others to be rota rotating the other way, all I'd need to do is duplicate this. So we've got 100 going one way and 100 going the other way and change your processing material to have a curve that is in this way. Nice. The radial acceleration still might be too much, though. Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> that's too little. I'll find the sweet spot. Don't worry. There. Gently floating spinny squares coming at ya. I think that works nice. Okay, now in the... Well, let's save this. In the background... This one? No. In the global? Yes. Here, we want to put spinny squares. 
And I keep forgetting. <laughs> Spinny squares. Spinny squares. Then in here, let's add you to the list of things you can draw from. Now for your script, I want to make it so that it isn't the same, the same one twice. It would be a select to not repeating. There's a lot of different ways to do this, one of which would be to generate an array of all the potential indices and then just pop the ones you can't use. But I'm wondering if there's a different, easier way. I mean, that is pretty easy. Hmm. <laughs> Let's take a look at what we got for arrays. special pop at I mean that's probably what I'd want to use shuffle shuffle that might be the way to do it I just need to shuffle the array each time and then I'll just pick the first two Assuming is how one would do that. Although I guess I didn't really pay attention. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it's just a function you call on it, the array. And then... I don't need to... I don't need to do that or that. I just need to do like that, change you to this. The identifier background. Oh, whoops. Background. Backgrounds, background index, instance. Oh. I wouldn't want to do that. I'd want to do this. And just that. Is, I think, how I'd want it. So let's see. That's the same. 
It is yet the same. It's continuously the same. I mean, theoretically, this could be, you know, technically possible, but I'm pretty sure I have it wrong. So let's do print debug backgrounds. All right, ninety three thirteen. Oh three thirteen. Three thirteen. Oh, three thirteen. Hang on a sec. It is working, but it's working in a deterministic fashion. I thought this was supposed to. Hold on. Shuffle. Use the global random number generator common methods. Randomize. Do I just do... Do I literally do it like this? Is that what I do? That does not like it. Are you having the problem where the seed is the same every time you run the game? Yes. I am indeed. I'm trying to get random backgrounds. And it does do random backgrounds, but when I start, it's always these ones. And it I feel like it's going to follow a deterministic path. I feel like I need to set this, but I don't know if shuffle is using this random. Um, I suppose I'll use cheat codes. Randomizing? Yep. Should just call randomize. Okay. So I don't need a specific randomize. Okay. I think I got it. Oh, what? the hay? That looks... That looks beautiful! What have I done? That just randomizes the global one? Oh, okay. I almost... Hold on. I want to... I want to see what you are. Flying tents and spinny squares. Is that really all it is? Why is that? 
Why is that so different? Are they reflecting a light source? I think they are. But... Maybe that's just how they look. That would be amazing if that's true. I think it is working though. Let's see if we can get those spinny squares again. Yeah! Holy smokes, that looks good. And also, the randomness is working. So it really was that simple. Just shuffle the array and pick two of them. Or pick num, uh, num backgrounds. So let's up it to three and see what you do. That gets a little too busy, I think. I think two is good. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot to check, too. Let's see if I can get the spinnies again. Oh, yeah. They're spinning all right. I mean, the camera is spinning. As cool as they look, I almost feel like it might be migraine-inducing with the brightness. What happens if you try and capture one of those wobbly circles? Oh, I can show you. You just can't. <laughs> I was there. This level was really boring, so I tried making it more fun. So now there's these like, I don't know, just springy things, <laughs> little bumpers attached to springs. I don't know if it makes it any more challenging, but it certainly makes it more fun to play around in. That's definitely more fun than the triangles. Hey, you remembered! And yes, way more fun than those triangles. Uh... Alright. Oh, another thing I wanted to work on is I kind of want to make some of the prizes a bit smaller again. They're just a little too big. Yeah, let's let's make them let's make them back down to one. I gotta close my window quick. It was starting to get a little chilly. And I had the window open because I made chili. And my whole apartment smelled like chili. And the smell just wouldn't go away. And today it was finally warm enough where I could open my window. And now the chili smell's gone. And I'm cold. Cold on the inside. Sixteen thirty-two? Yeah. That's the right one. Alright. You're looking good. Coin one. The coin size might actually be good already. The potions, though, they can go down a bit. Oh, and this is using some, like, special collisions. So you're gonna be 16, I'd imagine. And you're gonna be 16 as well? No. 14. 
move you up a bit. Then this one needs to move down there and be a height of 16. Nope, even smaller. This one uh, your extent shall be four and that's actually probably good like that maybe five there we go that's potiony shaped this one I'm just gonna do simple All right. That's looking good. The gems. I think I like the size of the gems, how they are now. Generic block. Are you good? Yeah, those spinny squares are a bit too... A bit too bright. Little battery. Okay. Background, spinny squares, direction light. Give you less energy and you even less energy. Now let's see him. That's better. Also, hey, wait a second. I thought I set the colors of those directional lights to be blue. How come it's pink? I don't mind pink. Don't get me wrong. But I gots to know. What is your secret? That's a blue, and that's a blue. I'm betting it's in here. The color ramp. That's what's causing it to change color. And I'm betting that's why it's going from pink to white and stuff. And this color is being like transformed by the direction lights color, which is resulting in pinks to so if you add that blue plus this green, you get a pink. And then I'm assuming once you get to here, it'll be a white, maybe? Or something like that. Let's take the color ramp off of you. And then we'll see if some of the trying or the spinny squares are the color we expected. if we ever get them. Eventually we should get them. There we go. No, wait, no, that isn't it. Okay. So the one spinning clockwise are doing it and the ones that are spinning the other way are also doing it so maybe it isn't the color ramp it could be in this material is there a light somewhere else it's not that color I can just filter by color. Or maybe I can't, what? 
Maybe it doesn't take into account, like, the, the materials attributes. doesn't have any color stuff on it. Ha ha ha. Color. Let's make you yellow. does not seem to have done anything. If we turn the visibility off on the direction lights, will that actually make... I think it made them invisible. Now I'm only seeing the ones that are spinning in that direction. But the ones that should be spinning in the opposite direction... Oh, you know what? I bet it's the world environment that's causing the colors. That might be it. So maybe we do need, like, an intense light. Or maybe we don't. What happens if we set the lights to nothing? Uh, hmm. In the background... This environment... Ambient light... Aha! It was that! Okay. Do I want to give everything an ambient light, or do I want it to choose its own light? Kinda want it to choose its own light. They're still getting pink. What on earth? Did I not save this? Oh wait, there we go. Now they're not getting pink anymore. All right. So then for this one, this had a color ramp. One of these two, I still had a color ramp on. Maybe it was this one? Or no, no. Because they were linked, that means that when I edited the one, it edited both of them. Because it was a duplicate. I should have set Make Unique on it. Um, but that's actually fine, I think. Let's give you... Let's give you the color. 
Yep. So they do change together. Oh, and that means that... Hang on. I don't actually have any that are rotating in the other direction. I don't think. Uh, it'd be under the angle curve. Make unique. You're going from there to there. Make unique. You're going from there to there. Oh no, they're both the same. That is... I'm sure it's because I duplicated it. There's maybe... Maybe a way to make you unique. Make sub resources unique. All right. Then let's change your angle curve to be going in the opposite direction. Which changed it for you as well. How do I make you a unique thing? I think I know. Get rid of you. Then let's add another particles. And then let's take this, copy properties, paste properties. Whoops. Sub resources unique. Go into here to the angle curve. <laughs> is it is it still linked? Why? Why are you both linked? I even made a whole new one. Is this the thing I need to make unique? Make unique. Make unique. Make unique. Make unique. Edit you. And you are assuredly changed over here as well. What to do? Local to scene? What happens if I clear you?
That one big one right there. Do that. At least it's unique now. Mission shape, sphere, sphere radius of 60. Looks like I pretty much just have to remake it. Um, let's see. Camping, tangential, radial. Okay. It was radial that I wanted. Your lifetime is five. Your process five. Feel like these ones are kinda slow. Oh no, they're they're picking up. Alright, your angle curve. It's gonna go like that. Um, I need to set the flag for the line Y. No, rotate Y. There we go. Now they're spinning in different directions. Nice. Take a look. I think they're always... Okay, now they're this color. It's like they're playing off the colors of the other thing. Particles. I wonder this thing. Do I need to to make a new material on it? What are the direction lights? That. Let's take a look at you. What are your direction lights? And you are that color. Give you that light. Hmm. Let me think. Maybe not green. Maybe darker blue. Pretty neat, actually. Yeah, I like it. But I think I forgot. 
change the angle random of you. This material should have what color do you have? They're both white now. That's looking pretty good. I think I like it. Okay. But also, I might want to make these squares a bit smaller. Subdivide. Nope, don't need that. Right, let's take a look now. This is definitely making for some interesting combinations. Let's make another one. Um, what should we do for it? Also, the number of particles it's a bit high, I think. Let's bring you down to 50. Alright. New background object. New scene. We'll call you. Um. Like sphere, uh, sphere, sphere drops. Three D scene. We'll grab the stuff from the falling blocks, I think. Let's rename you to Gotta change. Direction light. 
right. In your direction, right? Purple. And then we need to give you a script. Sphere drops. No, don't paste it in there. Like that. And then what do I want for you? Direction. Mission shape, a box. Oh, wait a minute. I don't want that. I don't want them going off every which direction. All right. They should all be drawing... They should all be going down now. Straight down. Where is the camera? Perspective. Camera space. I want bottom view? No. Two different views. Oh, here we go. Two viewports. That's what I wanted. That's kind of neat. That is a neat... Yeah, I'll do that for the next one, I think. But for this one, I want... Take the spheres and make them a bit smaller. Maybe. Height that smooshes them. How can I get you to not slice them in front of me? I think to do that, I need to change it to a ring.
That ring radius is way big. So that ring... Ring radius, ring inner radius. If I have it right, I can change the time on it. Let's do a height and speed scale so that I can tell what's going on. All right. Yes. Ring height. the particles space to be 20 so they start above it and then we want instead of doing speed scale let's actually give you the velocity we want which is going to be 10 Change the speed scale to one. They're not making it there, I feel. Their lifetime is too long. Still probably too long. And maybe too much initial velocity. All right, I think we're getting there. Let's do a radius of that. I that. Hmm. How do I want you to look? Just regular spheres. Stock standard. Okay. I think I'm satisfied with that. right there so it should only ever be seen yeah okay and then for you your rotation speed let's actually export that let's change it to that Then, let's play the game. Oh, we don't actually have it yet, though. We ha I mean, we have the sphere drops, but we don't have it in the background object yet. Sphere drop.
go. There we go. I think they're falling too quick. See any blinking out of existence? I don't think. Oh, they're popping into existence, though. We can sometimes see that. So let's give you a scale curve. Change you to 128. You're going to quickly zoom in to existence. You're going to stay at that size until you quickly zoom out. So no matter where you come from, it doesn't look like you're just popping into existence. You're growing into existence. This maybe. <laughs> Whoa. drops. This music sounds a little intense. <laughs> that should be good with all the spoopiness it entails. Secret Space Ducks. That's an interesting title. Um, now, let's make just one more. And then I'll work on something else. I promise it won't just be me playing around with particles. But I do like that. Call you, uh, stars come in at ya.
these ones, instead of falling down, let's make them come forward towards you. So we want to change this perspective to that of the camera. Give you an emission shape of, what was it, a box? And we want the <laughs> looks like pink poop. I don't 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 want that to look like that. Oh, I had angle curves. That was useless. Spinning a sphere is not going to do much unless you have a texture on it. Um, oh, I need the box extents to be like that, I think. And the direction. I think I want it to be... are you camera you're in the negative Z direction oh whoops I forgot to set this to zero okay that's sending them all away from me. I actually want them to go towards me. The box... should have 20x, 20y, and 1z. Then... we want to make... The placement of the particles in space to be at zero y and a negative thirty in the z direction. All right, so there's the camera. I think what I actually want instead of a box is a ring. And I want the ring... The ring axis to be... on the Y direction. Those ones just got to die down, and we should have it like that. Let's make the ring inner radius a bit smaller. Oh, you're still getting, still getting culled. get called. Let's actually change the speed scale up so I can see these way more quickly. Alright, that's looking better. So then for your scale, move 
move point, move point, add point, add point. I just want it to be flat up and then out. Corporate values. That's a weird song. Whoa, I just flipped. My avatar just flipped. All right, now. Direction lights. Let's change you from being blue to just white, maybe? And not nearly as bright. So these things should pick up whatever other, um, uh, oh wait a minute, I just realized, I'm gonna need to do something slightly different, because when the camera rotates, you're actually gonna see stuff like that, so you'll see that. Which is not bad, but I need to make them... I need to make them either last longer or... a whole lot of them right there. So we need to change the position of the particles relative to the camera to be further back. Or... Yeah, further back. So now if we take a look at the camera, it should be in the middle of this star field that's slowly going past. Now we need to make it so that the scale of these things uh, picks up much quicker and drops off much quicker. I think that all looks good. Maybe let's... Let's bring the ring radius in a bit. Yeah, there we go. Oh, looks like an ad starting. I'm gonna actually use that opportunity to take a break. I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. And welcome back to, um, uh, the game? Uh, hi Vaxrel, how's your evening going? This music is a bit too intense for this time of night, I think. Let's listen to some of this. There we go. So, Vaxrill, what I've been doing is making the backgrounds a lot more interesting. Kind of feel like I just really have fun doing that. Um. I named this Starts Coming At Ya. That's not what I wanted. Stars Coming At Ya. That's what I want. Now, let's script. Uh, stars come in and match up. Attach script. Create that. Oh. Save you. Your rotation speed. That should be good. Let's see what you look like. Ooh, I like that one. I also forgot to add the stars coming at you to the background list. Here, stars coming at you. Seven backgrounds. Nice. I think that's enough for now. Those actually look kind of crowded. There's too many spheres. That looks pretty neat. I think, I think I've got some good combinations. Um, as for the sphere drops one though, I think what I need is actually less particles. Yeah, just, just a few. And then stars coming at you, how many particles do I have? 200? Again, too many. Save you like that. Your direction lights, you have two of them. I should probably give you a hint of some color. Like that. Yeah. That's looking pretty nice. And it's boop. All right, the potions. Is changing their size. Got the batteries. The bomb size. The 
bomb size changed as well, or the size of its collision shape. So I'm betting it was tied to some other one. Let's just close all tabs, get back into the prizes, and see the bomb. You're not a prize. <laughs> You're a hazard. You're a hazard who is sharing a collision shape with... Some other thing. Or, wait a minute. Did I do that intentionally so that the bomb could fit into smaller spaces? That actually seems like something I might have done. But it looks kind of weird, so I'm going to change it back. Or... Do I just want to make the bomb smaller in general? No, I feel like it should be pretty noticeable and big. Alright, let's go back to the prizes. We did... I think we just did the experience potion. So at 100%, you look like that. At 100% you, like that. Okay, so we did just do the experience potion. Or I should say we only did the experience potion. What did we pick for your radius and your height? Oh, we didn't do the neat thing that we did here. Let's copy and paste you in here. All right, and then for this one, Your height should be was it 16. Move you down to thereabouts. There we go. Oh, and then this collision shape should be 16, 32, maybe just 30. And move it down a bit. There we go. Now... The mana potion. Let's grab you. Add you. Both. Oh, whoops. A scale. Oh, this is Mana Potion Small. Oh, uh, I don't want to mess with you. Just regular Mana Potion, please. There we go. Put you down a bit. Get this collision shape down. shape down to about there. Uh, maybe 16 and 2. No, just there. Uh, 
I think that's all of them. Now, let's take a look what they look like. Newbie zone. There we go. They're pretty small now, but I feel like they're more manageable. do I want to work on? I think perhaps I'll work on the sound next and try to actually get that positional stuff working. All right. Sound manager. We have audio stream player. What we really want is audio 2D player. Object destroyed by laser sound. That is no longer used. Let's look at audio. Um, audio stream player. I'm pretty sure it's audio stream player 2D. There we go. Audio stream player 2D. give it a position or does it contain it, it's no 2d will have its position okay so basically what I would need to do is instance an object of audio stream player and adjust its position became var p equals audio stream player 2d.new it should continue to to work are working. How do I even test this? Bus equals bus. Available play. 
sound path. That gets them in the queue. So what we need is available like that dot position print debug so we should be able to hear or rather see where the sound is coming from So when the lasers fire, they're coming from position zero, zero. When any sound plays, it's coming from position zero, zero. So let's do... Sound dot sound path. I don't know if this is going to work. Nope. So to fix that, all I need to do is go back here, give you um, vector vector two dot zero. I believe. So now, I 
the sound We need to make anywhere that we're using the sound manager to also include the position of the sound. So let's do that. And let's do lasers for now. Your position will be Probably just position or global position. Okay. So that sounds like it's more at the center now. So we need... I know what I can do to test this. Level template. Um, instance. No, that's not what I wanted. A uh, new inherited scene. There we go. Tile map. It's not really that important. All I want is to add um, a node 2D. We'll rename you to Sound Generator. Your position will be uh, we'll put you right there. So I kind of know where it is. And you will have a script. Sure. You're gonna have a timer, and your script will be timeout sound generator sound manager dot play. Um, which sound? Assets, that's right. Sounds. Dupe. Let's play menu dupes. So we want to play this sound, and we want your global position. Um, let's save you as not a test level. But uh, levels, we'll call you sound test. No, level sound test. Let's rename you to sound test. We'll give you a level type test. Your template name will be sound test, or not template name, your level name. All right. This timer needs to be auto start. Let's do 0 0.5 for timeouts. Let's play you.
All right, I need increase my own volume so I can hear these dupes. Oh, whoops. Wait, it should be in here. That's a cool effect. Although I feel like it's not in the position I expected. Hold on, let's let's give you a sprite. Um uh quick load. Let's give you a wheelie. We'll give you modulate of that. Uh, no, let's make you green. Yeah, the sound's not coming from here. Oh, I don't think I'm actually setting in the sound manager. Yeah, I'm not actually setting the position. Okay. So we want available dot position dot global position to be equal to the current sound dot position. All right, now let's try it. Yeah. It's working. I can hear it. Yeah, nice, nice. Okay, music back on. That actually wasn't nearly as hard to figure out as I thought it would be. positions. All right, let's search for all of them. Sound manager. Um, global position. Position, global position, global position. Want you there too? And you? You as well. You're already there. The menu do. That one's going to be tricky, because if I put it to vector to zero, that will actually be 
the top left, which will make it sound very strange in your headphones. So I think I actually want the default to be not vector to zero, but like half of the screen width and height. Um, um how do I want to do this? Var default. Ah, I spelled that way wrong. We'll start you off at vector 2, 0. But in the ready state, we will... I mean, in the ready function, we'll reset you to... Um, vector 2... Um, OS dot screen. Um, OS dot width. Center window. No, that's a function that will center the window. I don't want that. Um, I want to get... I want to get the... Huh, what do I want, actually? That is an interesting question. If I want something to play at the center, um, shoot. <laughs> so this is a tricky part. I may actually want to create two separate pools of sound things. Uh, a set of audio stream 2Ds and just audio streams. And then I'll have two different functions. I'll have a play function and a play 2D for my sound manager. I think that's what I need to do. Almost positive that's what I need to do. Position. That's fine. No. I don't want to mess with that. I'll just leave that in just in case I call this thing without it. So you're actually going to be play 2D. And you... Default 
position. Nope. Then add child. That's we're instancing it. Available. Let's actually take you up there. This would be 2D. the same, but instead we want this. And we don't want that or that. We don't need the print debugs anymore. Get rid of those. sound is that. I guess we really only need this. We don't actually need to declare that. Now, let's see. We want this to be play 2D. No, no. We just want that to be play, right? Yes. Because that's actually using the play of the audio stream uh, player 2D. just need to go through all of these again and determine whether or not we want them to do the 2D version. For these, we definitely want them to do the 2D version. I should probably also save this. Okay. You are play, play 2D. Slime. Destroyed. Play 2D. 
fixed you. The bomb explode sound. It's gonna play 2D. And this one is gonna be play 2D. The reward sound should be play 2D. The destroyed should be play 2D. The laser should just be play. The windscreen menu dupe should just be play. This should just be play. Pause menu, level select, should all be just play, and that should just be play. Okay, I think, I think that's good. Wait, which one are you? Oh, you're the dupe. <laughs> the little dupey thing. It didn't like that. I thought I heard it play actually though. Oh, I heard the menu do play. But you, what are you trying to play? sound. Didn't get anyone. Oh, I know exactly what it's doing. I was just checking to see if the queue was empty, not the queue 2D. Available 2D, queue 2D. Yes. Play a cued 2D sound. sound. Uh, hold on. Print. Oh, that's right. That dupe didn't. Okay. Sound man manager. Sound generator. Oh no, that should have played. Yeah, that should be playing. Print debug. Um, current 2D sound. Let's see. It just played it once. It should be playing it every half a second. Hmm. It's not playing it anymore. What happens if I do this? Sorry for the lack of music. That 
that's really weird. Oh, I know what's happening. What is that sound effect? Um, that's just me saying doop. Doop, 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 doop. <laughs> I thought that would be a fun menu sound effect. And I'm also using it to triangulate where the heck these sounds are being played. And I think I just realized my answer. Um, I'm... Oh, wait, no. I didn't realize my answer. What the hey? <laughs> what the who the hey? That should be an audio stream player 2D. Do I need to create a separate bus for it maybe? Bus 2D equals 2D bus. <laughs> I don't really know how buses work in this. These sound effects are playing all over the place. What? Also, they're not playing in here. Q2D. Are you playing in here? Var current sound is equal to this. We'll make you like that. So this way I can also do a print debug of that. Let's play it again. What the? <laughs> Hold on. If not queue empty, available pop front. I feel like it's not actually loading the sounds into, um, into available 2D, even though, oh, whoops, did I really do that? All right, maybe it'll work. Yeah. Okay, then it's not happening anymore. I have no idea what you're up to because I'm not paying enough attention. Oh, sorry. Um, what I'm trying to do is get uh, two-dimensional sounds working so that you can actually hear where the sound is coming from. And so sounds that are further away will sound quieter um, and also work with like a stereoscopic uh, Location sense, I think. Um, not stereoscopic. That's vision. St just stereo? Stereo auditory? Whatever the word is. Um, but yeah, also, don't worry about paying attention. I'm happy that you're just, you know, just stereo. Yeah, I thought it might be that. Um... So what I need to figure out now is why this is playing just once and then no more. I'll turn the music back on. Ah, that's loud. Well, loud for me. Probably not loud for you. Um. Huh, huh, huh. Oh, sorry, I'm back. Hey, Vexrel, and no worries. Um, happy you're here, and feel free to have me on in the background or come and go as you please. I'm just sort of tinkering around. Um... <laughs> and also, if any of you are ever wondering what I'm up to, feel free to ask. 
I probably am not doing the best job of explaining what I'm trying to figure out. Or I might just be kind of mumbling to myself about what ought to happen. Uh, do you plan to use C++ with Godot or Unity with C Sharp? Um, right now I'm kind of happy learning uh, GD script because I've never really used Python before and I feel like this is good experience for me. Um, if there was like, if I really got into game dev stuff and I needed to like get some low level performance, I might consider using C++, although the consensus seems to be that Rust is the way to go with with uh, low-level Godot stuff. Um, as far as Unity with C-sharp, I have used it in the past, um, and I might again someday to tinker around with it or to uh, salvage old projects of mine, um, but for now I'm kind of just happy using this. <laughs> mumble, mumble, mumble. <laughs> Mumble grumble. Why oh why do my 2D things not work? Right here. This is it. That was it. I am super convinced. When finished playing a stream, make the player available again. On stream finished. On stream finished 2D. I was missing some stuff. Available to D dot append stream. Okay. This, this should work, but if it doesn't, that's okay too. If you're wearing headphones, maybe you can hear this. It's definitely changing. As we pass that little green dot, let the dupes fill your auditory capacities. All right, I think it's working now. I was just kind of... kind of having some some code brain farts but I think I think I've got it now okay so we're registering a total of 16 players eight uh, regular audio stream players and eight 2d players the regular ones will be used for stuff like menu items, and I think maybe even the lasers should be. Because um, we always want them to come from like, well, it'll be easy to change if, um, uh, it'll be easy to change if we want to. Okay. I think it's time for some lo-fi chill stuff. Let us see. Where's my playlist? Which one of you? Let's do this one.
There we go. Uh, hi, Mer Merkia. How is your evening going? You've reached the the chill part. Uh, hi, Zongo Killer or Exongo Killer. How's your evening going? Swell, just ate. Nice. Uh, what what were you munching on? How am I? I'm doing pretty well. Uh, earlier today I did a Mega Man X speed run and got below an hour, so I was super happy. But also, like, a little too excited, I think. So now I'm just trying to calm myself down with some game dev stuff. Uh, I made a bunch of new uh, backgrounds. So we got these falling drop thingies. Some spinny ones. Those are ones that are more the same. So yeah, and I also made it so that the backgrounds um, will always pick two different ones. So you won't just get like doubled up of the same shapes. So it's a bit more dynamic and interesting. And then I also figured out how to get um, two-dimensional sound working so that the sound actually sounds like it's coming from a place instead of just everything from the center. Uh, thanks, Exongo Killer. Yeah, I'm kind of just going back and polishing stuff, I think. Trying to get everything feeling pretty nice. Um, because I don't know how much extra stuff I'm going to do before I'm, like, satisfied to release it on itch. I mean, as it is, I almost could do it now. But there's a few little things I want uh, to fix up first and add. Like, I want to have some music on it, and I want to have, like, I don't know, some sort of direction or goal. I didn't know you speed sped run stuff. That's cool. I made a uh, lamb kimia. What is lamb kimia? Ooh. That sounds super tasty. Um, and yeah, for speedrunning, um, I don't, I mean, I don't really speedrun. Um, it's just some games that I grew up, uh, that I played a lot growing up, I'm pretty good at. And so with this one, at least, I knew I was good enough to get some place on the leaderboard. And I think I'm like, Oh, what was it? I got... I got just under an hour, so it would put me at uh, 389th place. Which... It's pretty close to the bottom, but... Not bad. A uh, lamb kimya looks like a Turkish dish? Um, not sure what it would taste like, though, because all the recipes I'm seeing just say, add Kimya spice mix. And it seems like you eat it with hummus. Turkish curry. Nice. How come I can't find it? I don't know. You often use, um... That duck duck go so maybe it's maybe it's that duck duck go what would you get if you search for that kimya lamb kimya Yeah, I see the poem you're talking about. Maybe if you put recipe? There you go. Yeah, lamb kimia recipe. Hmm. 
wonder, <laughs> that's kind of making me hungry again. Let's see, what, what should I eat? I might make egg salad tonight, I think. It's pretty easy, and I got a few hard-boiled eggs left. The secret is pickle juice. Gotta add that vinegary goodness. Um... Right, done with the sound manager. I don't need this test anymore. Get rid of you. Ping ball? What was ping ball? Oh, it was that. I don't need that anymore either. Glow test? That was just a glowy block test I don't need. All right, that's good. Goo, goo Guru? I don't know if I've seen that before. What is Goo Guru? I'm just doing English. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Sorry. Did not pick up on that. <laughs> like in my head, here's here's what I was thinking. Um like there's a lot of dishes that are kind of gooey, and I was thinking it was like some silly like list of curries and stews and and all types of food that's Kind of a goo. Uh, I don't need that. Don't save. Don't need that. Don't need that. Actually, do I have in here? Level sound test. Get rid of you. <laughs> What did I say I was going to work on next? I think I forgot already. <laughs> glad, glad you're... I hope it was chill vibes. It was chill vibes. Nothing but chill vibes here. Or chilly vibes. Uh... Where, oh where, do I want to focus my attention? I should probably go back and try getting... Hey, wait a minute. Didn't I rename these levels? Oh, that's right. I was going through each level and yeah, I was adjusting them and then I was going to rename them. So let's rename you to level, what should I call you? Level color, color balls. Uh, color balls? Sure. That's what you are now. Right, what's level five look like? Different sides. Um. The premise is kind of okay, but I feel like the levels are boring. So for this one, it, it's one side is buffs, one side is gold, and there are hazards in the middle. 
But I feel like there's really not a whole lot of incentive to ever go after the buffs when you could pretty easily just get, you know, get those things. It's like, yeah, if we play this one, I could pretty easily just win and not even worry about buffs. Well, oh, <laughs> the bomb disappeared. So let's see what we can do to make it more interesting. about this kind of simple but let's make this prize spawner um it won't do any one coins it will do 10 coins and it will do no experience gems mostly going to do blocks and that will make the level last a bit longer so you might need to get um you might need to get some buffs and this one let's make it spawn stuff a lot quicker the bombs will make even more rare No generic blocks. Spiky balls, slimes, and bombs. Maybe more spiky balls. This one. No bombs on this side. Because we don't want it throwing, um, throwing buffs in there by accident. Okay, and then you, experience potion, battery, health potion, mana potion. Okay, so you'll go grab a scoop of those, put them in there, go back over here, see if there's any coins you can get, and you keep going back and forth. Will this actually be at all fun? load up on shields there's a 10 coin gotta sort of dig it out whoa this is too many prizes. I need to be less generous with those prizes. But I think other than that, yeah, holy smokes. <laughs> that is a lot. This is definitely more interesting now. I think... There's really no risk to just... Uh, landing sound effects? Oh, like when things hit the ground. Hmm. How would I do that? I could do that. 
The globs should make monster noises too for polish. Yeah, you should make those slimies uh, make squishy noises. I agree completely. But first, let me change. Before I forget, whoops, not that. Don't want to change that. I want. Which one are you? This one. I want to actually add some spiky balls in here. Make it a bit more dangerous. And then this, I wanted to make less generous. Your timer shall be two to five. No, three to five. And we'll call you... Uh... Two sides. Okay, now to the sound effects. Now that I've got two dimensional sounds working, what kind of sound should a slime make? Uh, hazard. Slime, your script. Also a machine sound when the claw is moving. Um, maybe. I think though what I want to do is, um, right now you can, um, you can sprint. There's like a sprint button you can hold. But I think I actually want to turn that into like a, like a dodge mechanic. So you get like a quick burst of speed. And I feel like that should have a sound effect. But I don't know if I want it to make a constant sound when it's moving. Um, but for now, the slimes. I gotta think, when do I want them to make a noise? Oh, when they're hopping. They should make a noise when they hop. Pitch increase sound low. Let's... For the claw machine? Yeah. We would... Yeah, we'd make it, like, make a swooshing noise, like, swoosh, or... Whoop. Or something like that. But for slimy, slimy hops, let's let's open up that um, that chip tone. That's a good one. All right. Uh, where do I download you? Save, there we go. Let's do Audacity. Open. Uh, you. Air sound. Yeah, that's pretty good. Do I want to do any? if I want to do any changes. I think I just kind of like it as is. Let's 
slime pop. Sound. Uh, you can normalize it in Godot if it's a WAV file. Um. I'm not sure what that means. I'm kind of a audio newbie. I've pretty much just been just been making them as OGGs. Not even really sure why, but I'm being consistent at the very least. Um, normalize means to use all the volume, aka max volume on the sound. Oh, I gotcha. So that would make them... Wait, if we go here and there... Let's... Hold on. It's a teachable moment. I'm gonna learn stuff. Uh, okay. Where did I put you? We'll call you slime. Uh, slime hops. Pop. Oh. You get more options. I see, I see. And with this, you just get loop and loop offset. What do you do? Use the full volume of the sound. Um, let's see. Is there okay slime hop sound oh I see so Said plop. <laughs> uh, thanks, Exodrifter. <laughs> um, need a Nova SFX a sound effect pack now. Um, I'm pretty sure that's actually how Goki Dev makes a lot of his sounds. That's kind of where I got the idea from. Like, uh, I've only, I've only caught it once or twice, but you'll hear, like, all sorts of, like, sound effects and chewing noises, and then, uh, they get put into Audacity and made into, like, either bug noises or attack noises or whatever. It's actually kind of cute. Um... Yeah, I need to I need to learn a lot more about sound stuff. I'm super interested in it. I just guess I haven't taken the time yet. Um So Yeah, we only want to hop if we're in here. Sound manager dot play 2D. 
uh, we want slime hop sound. So I think one of the things that I just realized why OGG might be a little better is I think it's a smaller file size. Uh, you went to music college for sound? Nice! That is pretty interesting. You should, um, I mean, if you'd be okay with it, please feel free to post any, like, sound stuff you're working on. Because, like, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't have to be game stuff that you can share. You can share anything that you're working on. Okay, so we got the, the, the slime hop sounds. Um, yeah, I think, I think I am going to stick with .oggs unless, unless I need a WAV file for something. But it's good to know that I have the option. So let's play... Uh, here there be more slimes. Any minute now they'll be hopping. Yeah, I can hear them. Alright, this will be a good stress test, actually. Let's see if we can max our audio stream players. It does sound more alive. I also just realized I've still got the print debug statements that I'll need to get rid of. You should pitch it randomly slightly? I think I am, actually. Um... And bounce, 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 bounce. I think this is the most sound we're gonna get. Because we only have eight 2D sound players, and I think they're all playing right now. Not that I can tell, you know, <laughs> but it hasn't sounded much different for a while now. Um, but yeah, in uh, the sound manager... Oh, let's close this one. Uh, yeah, I'm doing a pitch scale uh, random between uh, 0.8 and 1.2. So they all are just slightly different. Um, but I definitely like that, that slimy sound. No. The sounds the slimes make. I guess I also kind of like slimy sounds. But yeah, thank, uh, thanks, on, uh, Exongo Killer. Um, so, maybe I should work on more sounds. Spawn sounds? Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Okay. And I know just where to put it, I think. In the prize spawner script. Whenever we spawn something, let's give it a sound. I don't think I want... I don't think I want different sounds. I think I just want... 
just like one sound that all the things make. I think I know what sound I want. All right, let's give it a try. Like a pop, pop. Hmm. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's listen. Oops. Don't want any of that. Don't want any of that. All right, I gotta, gotta pause the music for just a bit. Cause I need to hear this. This is important, these pops. Whoops. Which pop is the best? I think it's going to be that one. There we go. All right. Prize pop sound. Uh, in my game, the swing sounds are my mouth blowing on the mic. Oh, nice. Like a, or a, um, okay. We definitely also want this one to be a 2D sound. Spawn prize, if not spawner disabled. Got really close to the mic and make the sound crack. Nice. That will make for a really menacing sound, I think. For be good for, like you said, for your um your swing, like attack stuff. Where do I want to call you? Uh yeah, that that um that pitch randomization thing really makes games feel more or i should say feel less static uh prize list probably want to call it like rate right here maybe sound manager dot play to 2D, we want prize pop sound. All right, now let's take a look at a level, uh, different sides. Reminds me of Minecraft. <laughs> picking up all the little things. Yep, yep, picking up items. Okay. So I think for the prize spawner, there should probably also be some visual indicator that a prize has come into existence. 
like a tiny little explosion. A few pixels dropping out. Or some wavies coming out. Um, okay. Level objects, prize spawner. You've got that. Let's give you an additional Particles 2D. We'll rename you to um, Rise Spawn Particles. So we want you to have Particles Material. Let's actually sleepy you for a bit so we can see these. We want you to be, I think your point is good. Then we'll do direction, spread 180, gravity, none, initial velocity, 10. Nope, 50. Time, explosiveness, all the way up. Well, actually, maybe not all the way up. Like that. Okay. The amount we want, maybe like 50. Lifetime, 0 0.5. Velocity, 100. Fireworks, yeah. And then, actually, do we want this to have a texture? Let's see what it looks like with the wavies. We will need to align their Ys. There's definitely far too many of them now. Particle Master, I don't know about that. But I do like playing with them. Maybe let's spawn 50. So then let's take a scale ramp. Uh, let's do... Add a point down to here. Let's make your explosiveness a bit less, a bit more. One shot emit. I think we want maybe okay then it was dampening right that we wanted this to go and we want the max value to be uh, I think it's 1024 is the max we can get Yep. Do we want to ramp it up? Maybe like that? All right, now I think I want a color ramp. Oops, ah. This gradient. Let's do 
from uh, that. Zero alpha all the way up. So it should look like that. But I think we actually don't want you to end completely. Like we just want to be sort of like that. All right, what do you look like at 100? I think that's probably good. Does randomness do much? A little bit. dot emitting is equal to true and it should be one shot yep so that means it'll just go once now let's take a look I forgot to turn the other particles back on. <laughs> Whoops. All right, different sides. Okay, I think I need it to be bigger. I do want it to be that. I love how Godot instance loads. Oh, how it how it loads instantly. Yeah, it's super fast. Um, I think I need more initial velocity. There we go. Something like that, I think. There we go. Actually, let's let's make it even smaller. Because how long is that sound effect? I mean, let's make the lifetime smaller. Because the sound of the prize pop is... Yeah, let's make you let's make you around that same lifetime. Okay, now we need to give you more velocity. Uh hi Goki Dev. How's your evening going? Are you feeling a bit better today? I'm using your forbidden technique of sound effects via recording mouth noises. Not really, I'm still tater, but no worse. That's good. Or good to hear that it's no worse. Might be a bit too big. Let's bring you back a bit. It looks like you've been adding lots of polish today. Yeah, for sure. Um, let me show you. I added a few new backgrounds and I made it so that it'll always um, pick two different ones instead of potentially picking two of the same ones. Um, 
And I've been adding different sound effects. Okay, these are two different ones, but they have the same colors. I'm hearing all sorts of pops now. <laughs> pop, pop, pop. Oh, and I gave the slimes uh, uh, bouncy sound effects. I might need to adjust. <laughs> Block, pop, pop, pop. Oh dear. Um, I might need to adjust the range at which you can hear these things. Like, I feel like you do want to hear stuff if it's off of the screen, but not if it's too far. So, I thought I remember reading an audio stream player 2D that there was a setting for max distance. Default is 2,000. 2,000 what, though? 2,000 pixels? 2,000 units of measurement. Well, let's try cutting it in half. All right, I think we want to do this. Available. Okay. P to D dot max distance equals 1000. Have I broken something? like it's playing the effect after the items already come out which is not quite what I want so you are in prize spawner comes into the world. Let's let's think about this. We almost want take the lifetime down to that will it look more more better -er? let's go to newbie zone just take a look at it I mean that's kind of looking like it Also, I think, I think I do want to give it a color other than white. But 
But yeah, oh, let's see what it looks like on a level with stuff that's moving. Different sides. Yeah, it's still... Maybe I want to change the position of the prize spawn particles to wherever the the child's position is. Prize position. What's the problemo? Um, it kind of looks like if you go in here. It's not really a problem, but like the effect of the pop, that little white bit when the thing comes in, I think I want it to actually maybe like start and play at the position of wherever the prize is. So to do that, all I'd really need to do is something like this. Uh, you should turn off local coordinates. That is what I should do. <laughs> Thanks, Skoki Dev. Local. Oop. And now. There we go. That's closer to what I wanted. And I actually think I don't want it to have the wavies after all. I think I just want it to be dots. Uh, let's do just so we can see it. And let's make the scale to like five. And the lifetime to there. Yeah, that looks better. More explosion-y. One shot. Do that. Uh, still not quite where I want it. I think it's this color throwing me off. Or I should say this lack of color. That's looking good. Yeah, neat. Whoa, <laughs> poppy slimes. Whoa, exploding. Exploding slimes. They really get thrown, I know, right? I 
think I might actually need to make the slimes have a bit more weight to them. Um, and then also give them some more hop force if I'm doubling their gravity. Let's go to this one and see the slimes. They're falling quicker. They're hopping pretty good. Just sort of grooving around. They got thrown pretty well. But I think I'm okay with that amount of throw of throwing. Well, actually, maybe not. I bet I can I think in the bomb I had yeah, a separate explored oh that eh, explode for up force, which I should probably lower a bit. So that's getting added to the already explosion force. And maybe actually this down a bit too. Now let's watch ya. Waiting for a bomb. gotta drop someday. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty good. Alright. I think the next thing I wanted to work on was right now you've got like a shift thing. Um, sorry, a sprint thing that you can use by pressing shift. But I kind of want to turn it from a uh, like a sprint into more of a dash or dodge roll, or you know, like uh, something that'll give you a few iframes and also make you move faster in a direction. Maybe, maybe not iframes. Maybe just move faster. But that can also play a sound effect. So, let's go into the claw machine. Which is under player, this one, your script. It's gonna be in here, handling the movement. So the sprint bonus is applied there. How do I want to figure this out? I probably want a sprint uh, duration. Duration, duration, say one second. And I, <laughs> not sprite, sprint. And then sprint cooldown. We'll say two seconds, I think. That sounds okay. So... Do I want... Do 
I want timers on you. Okay, let me check to make sure I don't have to rewrite code twice. Claw arm. Claw arm. Okay, you're both using the same script, so I can just do it in here. I want... Uh, what do I want? Uh, also, hi, whoever just started watching. How's your evening going? Um, maybe I do just want a couple more timers. Hmm, how do I want to do this? Bar is sprinting. Let's see. I think I want to do it in code, actually. So this, I'm pretty sure I want to do in, um, I'm brain farting on it. What are you again? Not ready process. So what we will do is check to see If action is pressed, um, bar sprint, not sprite, sprint time left, float will have you equal to, I don't know, zero, and then in the ready function, will make you sprint time left is equal to sprint duration. And in here, if this is sprinting, then we want to say is sprinting is true and uh, if and then we want to do if is sprinting uh, and sprint time left is greater than zero We want to make that equal to minus delta. And then if sprint time left is less than or equal to zero, we want is Printing to be false. So I think that's good for that. Oh, also, um, I 
at this point, we need to reset the sprint time left. We also need a sprint cooldown left. Is equal to two? No, not two. Is equal to sprint cooldown. If is. And that is sprinting is false. And um, I think I want an enum instead. forget how to do enums. Enum sprint uh sprint mode um sprinting Cool down and ready. Then we want export that bar. sprinting if sprint and uh, sprint mode is equal to sprint modes dot ready then equal to sprint modes dot sprinting. If it's equal to sprint modes sprinting and sprint time left is greater than zero, we diminish sprint time left. If we're sprinting. A switch would be good here. I think. How do I use switches? <laughs> Switches? Ah, eh, whatever. No, I want to know. I'm going to look it up. It's yet to be implemented here.
Okay. Gotcha. Match sprint mode. Um sprint modes dot ready. Sprint mode cooldown, and we also want to reset the sprint time left is equal to sprint duration. If that's greater than zero, then we want to have sprint down left minus equals delta this <laughs> I don't need to do that I can just do an else else sprint mode is equal sprint mode start ready Sprint, sprint cooldown left is going to equal sprint cooldown. All right, I think this is logically sound. Sprint is ready, and we see that we have this input. We change the mode to sprinting. If the mode is sprinting, sprint time left is greater, we subtract it. Otherwise, we switch to cooldown. Neat. That should work. Or I might be doing it all wrong, in which case, Debugging times for future me. Uh, so for this one, I actually want to check if sprint mode is equal to sprint modes dot sprinting. If we're currently sprinting, let's add the sprint multiplier. So hopefully that will work.
Let's find out. I think it's not working, because I cannot sprint. I also forgot some print debug statements. Somewhere. In here. And in there. All right. Back to here. If is... Playing with matches, and I really shouldn't be. Gonna light something on fire. Oh, I bet it's because I saw it and do that, but I don't need that. Don't need those brackets, probably. Yeah. All right. Nice. Okay. <laughs> nice, nice. Thanks, Exodrifter. to make it visually apparent to the to the player that they're sprinting and also that there's a cooldown for sprint. And also, I think I want this to be a bit quicker. Sprint multiplier, let's make you two. So... Let's do maybe some sprint particles. I think the sprint going to be useful to launch things could very well be. Like if you want to push a coin or something to the other side of the level, you could use a sprint to really give it a boost. Um, all right. Give you a material. Whoops, whoops. Aha. Um, we'll call you Sprint Particles. So, the emission shape that I want, I think is a sphere of radius give you a bigger radius. Let's make you generate a bunch more. 
Let's make your lifetime really quick. Let's have you have zero gravity. And actually, let's change you to a ring. A ring radius of 60, inner radius of 50. Move you right there. That's 80. And 70. And then under drawing, uh, coordinates, turn that off. So they will stay behind. Um, okay. Maybe I do want to give him a little bit of gravity. Let's see what this looks like. It's close to what I want. But let's give you an even shorter lifetime. See what that looks like. see what you look like. Hmm. I wonder if I could make it like... <laughs> I wonder if I could make it like be an after image of this thing. How would I even do that? Well, I'm going to learn how to do that, I think. But for now, I think these will work fine. Yeah, I know, right? I do want that after image, but I don't think I know how yet. And that's the kind of thing that I feel like to get it right, I actually want to watch a tutorial first. For now, we're just going to leave behind some particles. Um, you will not be emitting unless... Uh, you are like this. Sprint mode sprinting. We're turning it on there, so let's do uh, sprint particles dot emitting be true. 
And then when we turn it off, we'll set it back to false. So now, all right, <laughs> we've got something that happens. So at least it gives you a little bit of an indicator. Now we need a cooldown indicator. Or do I want a cooldown? No, yeah, I want a cooldown. Are the particles in local or global space? Um, I turned off the this one. Um, uh, I turned off local coordinates so that they would kind of leave a trail behind. So I'm pretty sure if I have this on, it'll look like that. Yeah, they'll just follow. Um, shoot, I lost my train of thought. Where am I? Uh, oh, the cooldown. I need to figure out how to let them know they have a cooldown on their sprint. You know what I ought to do? have like a sprint meter in the in the yeah bar and then it could like be grayed out or it could like yeah 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 okay okay got a sprint bar that here let me actually bring up the GUI the UI is here Okay, so I'd have another bar for sprint, and as you use it, like when you use it, the bar will start going down, and then it will turn gray and slowly fill back up. Um, and then once it's reached all the way again, it'll turn to the color that indicates that it can be used again. And I feel like that will let the player know pretty easily, you know, that they got sprints. Uh, player panel. So we want to duplicate you. Rename you to Sprint label. Uh, sp not print. Sprint bar. And then your text will be sprint. And you will have uh what will you have? You'll have a different color. Make unique, make unique. This color, um, what's a good sprint color?
What would be a good sprint color? I guess I don't have a purple yet. Gray? Oh wait, you're the background. Hold on, hold on. Gray, yellow. Well, I have... I have... Uh, gold is kind of a yellowish one. I want to have, like, distinct colors. But I think gray might work. Purple or magenta? That's kind of what I was leaning towards. Goodness knows I like these colors. And then I actually want the bar to start at 100. I'll change you to that. Oh, and I think I actually want so I can see you. doing it for the shields. Oh. I should have put all of this logic or all of the logic for calculating that stuff on the player stats. The player stats should be keeping track of how much sprint is going on. trying to think do I want to have the logic for sprinting in here or in the player stats I don't know so then this would be Button code should on the button. Barcode should on the bar. Um, I kind of like to keep most of the things that I'm using. Um, Uh, barcode should be on the bar. Well, I kind of want to keep most like stats logic for a player on like a globally accessible player um, uh, scene. As far as what's displayed in here for like this, like yeah, this is probably an expensive 
operation. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. This probably should be on the, uh, the player shield bar. I also kind of don't want to have too many scripts, though. Uh, DST? You mean... Oh, Daylight Savings Time. What the hey? Did we just warp through time? Yeah, I think I think I Uh wait, what happened? And the answer is I did. Yep, we've shifted. Uh, what? What did I do? What in the heck happened? Oh, you know what? I think this is due to daylight savings time. All of a sudden, the timestamp on all the files got messed up. I bet that's what happened. That's super weird. I don't think I have ever been, like, coding and stuff during this. Oh, that is... that's nuts. <laughs> well, welcome to the future. <laughs> Oh shoot, my changes. They're gone. Uh What what all changes are gone now? Oh no. Well, this stuff's still here. What was I working on? Okay. So this stuff isn't spaced out yet. And I'm missing... I'm missing the sprint stuff. Uh, coin code should be on the coin, etc., etc. Um, that works for most cases, except I wouldn't want to have, like, um, so, like, because there are multiple different objects that all influence the amount of gold you have, I wouldn't want to keep track of the gold stuff on a coin. I'd want to keep track of it on a player, because it's the player that has the coins or the gold. Um, but yeah, I definitely do agree that most of the time it should go on it. But for my purposes, I think it's going to be easier for me to remember to change stuff if the script is on the parent node of a scene. Because any time that I am logically breaking stuff into scenes, for me it's more of like manageable chunks. The gold manager should be on the gold. Um, I could have a gold manager, but 
I don't know, I kind of want to keep all the player stat stuff into a player stats one. I definitely agree though that if this project's scope was to increase, then I might want to do that. But as it stands, I think it's okay. Um, well, now that we're like super late in the future, I think I might actually have to start wrapping up the stream. Oh no, it's fine that the coins count is fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I mean, again, like I've said before, I'm, I, I welcome any and all suggestions and backseat devving and stuff. Um, and a part of me, I mean, part of me does want to replace this, like, cause like a fine node operation is actually kind of expensive, but I think I'm okay paying this penalty because it'll only be occurring while the shields are active and it doesn't actually have that big of a tree to search. And I know that if I had scripts on all these different objects, I would just get confused in a hurry. Um, but anywho, yeah, I think it's about time to start wrapping up the stream, lest I get even more sleep lagged or whatever. So let's see if we can find someone new. Oh, that's right, I gotta go to browse first. Oop. Um, looks like different language. <laughs> Arrow axe, but I feel like we raid them plenty. Let's look for software and game development. Uh, Retro MMO is doing stuff. Random Rust projects might be fun. There is not a whole lot going on. Um, 3D modeling maybe? Got a Vegeta looking dude. And to be fair, not many people like to jump forward in time. Not that many people have a time machine either. I've sorta of got a time machine. It allows me to travel through time at the normal rate of time while I'm sitting at my desk. We could watch a 3D printer printing stuff. Isn't that a joke from Calvin and Hobbes? I would not be surprised. That sounds like something Calvin would come up with. <laughs> I have a time machine, but it only goes forward at the normal speed. Um, maybe this person? Then life happened. Oh, look at you, work life balance. That looks pretty cute. Okay, let's put some MSF here. So I'm just finished with the first. Yeah, let's do this one. My raffle. This zebra over here. I'm gonna do the next one after I render this. Alright, uh, thanks for. 
Thanks for stopping by, everyone. And I will see you all later. That's like a zebra, right? I think it did okay.